Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. In times of old, in times of new, there's a guy to follow to make it true. It's the pop culture feel. What is going on, Pop Culture Field Manual family? It is I, Cameron Fath, here with Izzy. Israel. Oh, you can go oh. ahead. Yeah, I guess you can. No, it's, I, I thought you were throwing it over to me. Oh, throw we it over. We should talk about this beforehand. No, I'm Israel Wright. I'm Israel Wright. Go, 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 Cameron. Okay, and today, so you know what? This is actually a very fun episode because we've literally talked about weapons in pop culture before i mean one of our first episodes ever was futuristic weapons and then mm-hmm. that wasn't enough no cerritos <laughs> we had to do improvised weapons but you know what we haven't done izzy what haven't we done cameron we have not just listed some of our personal favorite weapons in pop culture so that is what we're doing today i hope you're ready people i'm ready yeah i'm excited cameron this is this because it's I don't know. It's like going to a convention of things that you like. You just nerd out over, you know, all the things that you just it's it's all the stuff that you enjoy. Right. Yeah. And uh, I feel like this is an episode that everybody can get behind because while we are listing off our favorite weapons, they're thinking of their favorite weapons and either agreeing or disagreeing us ardently. Yeah. Uh, no, totally. With us ardently. You know, yeah. everybody's a freaking critic. And we're going to see <laughs> and we're going to find all the critics definitely today. But before we do. We just want to have uh, we have a couple of reminders for the listeners. Um, first and foremost, Patreon. We have made the switch to full episodes on Patreon. So if you're not subscribed to our lowest tier, which is the fuzzy private tier for five dollars a month on Patreon, you are only going to get the condensed or shirt- shortened version of this podcast the shirt the shirt where we yeah, don't wear shirts the one where we don't no the one where we do wear shirts but if we you do say wear the, shirts yeah and this may or not, may not be on the patreon the episode where we don't wear shirts but the only way to find out is to subscribe so if you want the full episode uh subscribe to our lowest tier on patreon but if that's not enough for you we also have two awesome extra tiers that get you a little bit more and most importantly, get you some time once a month to hang out with Izzy and I in real time. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what yes. else do we got, Izzy? Well, it, I'd say if you want to buy, if you just want to support the 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 podcast just generally, there's always a link to on our Instagram and wherever you listen to our podcast. Uh, you can buy us a coffee. We also have merchandise available. We have hoodies and shirts and pillows emblazoned with PCFM podcast and our our uh cat our uh, iconic grenade yep uh and with this i i actually really like the hoodie i was wearing it i went on a, a trip to oklahoma oh which is oklahoma. very cold and rainy and that hoodie came in handy and i was very proud to uh to wear my merchandise uh merchandise on the base so oh yeah very cool too, man so it was cool that's awesome yep so check it out um i think that is all we got for our announcements so without further ado uh let's do it man yeah let's get right into it so do you want to go first or do i want to go uh, first? yeah i can start it off man yeah, start I, us off. Uh, when it comes to rating your favorite weapons in pop culture folks i like to have some sort of like parameters to kind of guide my way because there's just so many out there like we're, we could do we could do 10 episodes yeah. on our favorite weapons and just never and never double up on any of them so i kind of have a bit of a rating system i try to go by a few factors like uh the power 
uh, maybe recognizability or, or uh, if it was an iconic kind of weapon, the fun factor of it, like how would I feel if I got to use this weapon? Uh, and, and maybe some of the best scenes, cause I'm a really kind of an emotional pop culture consumer. Like if I can, uh, Nerd. if I can attach, yes, if I can get all emotional about something in a story or maybe a, a weapon or, uh, a, you know, a vehicle, then I, I'm going to really attach to, to attach to that. So, uh, so that's kind of like my, you know, those are my parameters. Sure. Uh, and you'll you'll notice in my list, we start off kind of very grounded in reality, and then we get progressively yeah. more fantastic as the things go. And I liked your list. I'm excited to hear your reasoning on some of the stuff that you have on your list. But the first one I've got, we are playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on my stream, uh, twitch.tv slash my happy self. Shameless plug. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Got to get those plugs uh, in, man. Got to. <laughs> yeah. And we have just done an episode where you have to break uh, one of the members of your team out of prison. Very, <laughs> very iconic uh, Call of Duty type scenario. And I got two LMGs. The one that I liked the most it was the uh, it was the Sacken MG38 LMG light machine gun. Mm. It's actually based off a real, so it's a belt fed, uh, fully automatic machine gun, fires seven six two, and it's based off the IWI Negev N sixty seven, or I'm uh, sorry, NG seven, NG seven. Yeah, the Israeli Israeli weapons industries Negev and G sixty seven. So it's it looks kind of like a um, uh, a two forty two forty oh. Bravo. Uh, so real chunky. It's got that great rate of fire. It's a but drum or belt fed. And in the game, uh, it, when it comes to first person shooters, Cameron, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be humble, and I'm gonna say that I'm not the best shot. Okay. <laughs> so what what I lack in aiming ability, you make for, up for in pure uh, ammo capacity. That's right. Bullet gotcha. quantity, baby. Ammo capacity. So any weapon that I encounter in a video game that has uh, that has a high ammo capacity before I uh, before I have to reload, that's the one that I'm really going to gravitate to. Because if I don't get them on the first shot, I'll get them on the 57th or the 137th. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, not, I, I have no problem. As a former gun team leader, I, you know, more fi- violence of action, firepower. You know, if you can't kill them with one... Kill him with a billion. That's what I say. Mm-hmm. So, uh, hey, I I've, I have nothing against that. Well, that's awesome, man. Tell me about the the. Uh, you said you're playing Modern Warfare on stream right now. Yes. Is, how do you like it so far? I like it. I like it a lot. It's you can tell. It's definitely like uh, because in the first Modern Warfare remake from 2019, they they are not yet Task Force One Four One, and so at the end of that game, uh, Captain Price has the iconic you know scene where. Uh, the uh, the CIA operative uh, Laswell, she's like, what do you? She's like, what do you do now? He's like, I want to create a special task force, and she's like, what are you going to call? It? He's like, task force one for one. Everyone's like, oh yeah, it's going on. We're going to have another. <laughs> so uh, so this one's great. I like. Uh, there's they got the international intrigue. There's some stuff going on between the cartels and uh, the Iranian government. So you work with some uh, Mexican special forces guys. There's great characters there. Oh, that's the cool. only thing I would say that is missing so far is. Uh, in the first Modern Warfare remake, you have um, – oh, I forget her name. She is your the female protagonist. She's from the fake Durka Durka Stan country, yeah. the Middle Eastern <laughs> yeah. country that yeah, does not Yeah, the female fighter, yeah. The female fighter, yeah. And she, you kind of jump into her personal story and why she hates the Russians and why she wants her country to be free. And mm-hmm. I like that those kind of personal aspects that's personal storytelling. This one is kind of – it's more – action adventure it's it's a michael bay directed you know type action yeah just and go it's go really go. great yeah it's get really great gameplay uh really cool special levels there, there's stealth levels there's high action levels um but it's kind of just everyone's kind of doing their thing they're all kind of uh working together and being a team but uh there's a little bit of like a personal uh connection between one of the main characters and one of the antagonists i won't give too much away uh, which I, I like. I just like that personal storytelling because you can have the best action in a movie or a video game or a show, but if you don't care about the characters, to me, it makes it less engaging. So, Wow. I asked you how it was, and you gave me a full breakdown. <laughs> but I don't really care. It's like, whatever. Okay, yeah. Whatever. No, it's totally fine. It's really, like, I don't have a list that I want to talk about either. It's totally cool. Yeah. Honestly, right, my yeah. bad for even asking. <laughs> <laughs> you, you knew it was coming, Cameron. Yeah, it's all but good, like, Tell me... Tell me about you, 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 I'm mad at you, Cameron, Why? because you took the, probably the most iconic weapon in all of movie history and you got it on your list and I can't move, use it on my list. So no way. Wait, wait. Oh wait. 
Oh, wait, I totally, oh my gosh, Kim, I totally misread your list. Oh my God. <laughs> what did you, you think? What did you think? I thought I had... you put, I thought you put lightsaber. I didn't even read the description. I just got really offended and no. like walked away. <laughs> the, dude, lightsaber is for basic bitches. Okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Oh gosh. Yeah, I'm glad no. I didn't put it on there. Though. Yeah, no, 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 no. I did not pick the lightsaber. Although <laughs> very cool. Overplayed. You know what really okay. deserves, if we want to talk about sabers, let's talk about this. Okay. The Lightbringer from Game of Thrones, Beric Dondarrion. How do you say his name? Is that right? I feel like Dondarrion. You got it right. Dondarrion. Yeah. Okay, he's the Eye Patch guy, who's the leader of the Brotherhood mm-hmm. without banners, and he has yes. that sword that just can light on fire. At will. yeah, he can do it at will. At will. Yeah. yeah so there's like I was kind of looking into it because you know when it first made an appearance, uh, I think it was like season three, episode five or something like that, oddly specific, um, when he's fighting the Hound and he like gets his hand cut off and then mm-hmm. the guy like chants that spell and all of a sudden the sword lights on fire and you think yeah. there's like, you know, with you need to make some sort of sacrifice or blood is what puts it on fire, makes the magic happen, but then you see it later on in the series when they're fighting the white walkers with like Jon Snow and the, when they're like that badass hunting group, essentially. Yes. And they get just, all the main characters. Yeah. Together. They get all yeah. the main characters, all the badass characters and they're in, and they're in the North looking for the white walkers and he just does it automatically. And you're like, okay, I guess, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's way easier than you think it is. Um, you just press, press X for special ability. Yeah. It's like, he, there's like a little red button on the handle and he just presses <laughs> it and it lights on fire. But regardless I don't think we. It, I don't think I really care about how it happens. I just think that a old medieval sword that just happens to be on fire is OP as hell, and it is totally badass. I mean, Game of Thrones has like, I think it's kind of settled in reality. I mean, regardless of the dragons yes. and the no, totally. As far as just like realism, you know, there's not there's not like crazy wizards and stuff. Mm-hmm. But there is like hand to hand combat, but then there just happens to be some like mystical dragons and you know the white walkers but uh but I think it's kind of grounded in reality a bit, and a flaming sword is super awesome I mean it kind of yeah. is it's similar to in uh Pirates of the Caribbean uh what's the second one it's not at world's end but uh Davy Lone's uh, uh J- dead, dead, dead man's dead, chest dead man's dead chest. man's chest dead, dead man's chest, chest is that it yeah is Dead Man's Chest? I'm not sure. But the second one, when like uh, William Turner's character dips his sword in the barrel and then lights mm-hmm. it on fire, and he has like this flaming sword as he's fighting all of the uh, yes. all of the freaking Davy Jones fish people guys. Uh, yeah. But still, that's anything with a sword on fire is like up there in my books, and I definitely had to put it on this list just because it's super freaking cool, and uh, I think it's. You know, one of those weapons that you kind of say, uh, oh, yeah, I totally remember that weapon. I just forgot it happened, you know? (laughs) Yeah, iconic. Iconic, yeah. You hit the nail on the head, man. I think that's a great choice. In a a world like Game of Thrones where magic is not prominently featured, and I think he did that on purpose, when something like this comes up, it really does pop. Oh, yeah, totally. Well, that's numero uno on my list what do you i mean this is no it's let me let me mention this real quick these weapons are in no specific order of how much i like them they're just all what i could think of at the top of my head in that moment yes so izzy what's next on your list well it's true what you say cameron if this was in order this would be in the number one spot because you knew this that you knew this was coming folks yes here it comes Yes, the M41A Pulse Rifle from Aliens, the greatest movie of all time, 1986. Uh, Yes, this is the main weapon that most of the characters use in the movie. It's not the side, it's not the uh, the, the, the machine gun, the uh, uh, pulse rifle, the uh, smart gun that uh, um, Vasquez and Drake use in kind of the sub-level three episode, you know? This is kind of the main assault rifle that they have. It's 10 millimeter explosive tip caseless ammunition. It's got an over under pump action grenade launcher. Uh, it's the, they even have like a cool tutorial during the movie where Hicks shows Ripley like how to use it so that she can become more kind of self-sufficient. Um, cool ammo counter, iconic ammo counter oh, on the yeah, side, on the little side. digital readout. And 99 round detachable magazine, which I thought was pretty amazing. That's like a, that magazine That's does not high look capacity. like it can hold. Yeah, 99 rounds. Yeah, and nice. it's got a four-round burst or full auto fire. Um, 
I, I love this. I love this gun because it's obviously takes place in my favorite movie of all time. And there are so many great uh, scenes with it. The best scene out of all of them is, uh, you know, right in getting right into the start of the end of the second act, beginning of the third, when they find out that the aliens have breached their defenses and they're climbing in to the uh, through the walls, through the ceilings. Yeah. And, and they're they're trying to get trying to escape. That's when this 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 um, weapon really shines Hicks or uh, sorry. Hudson has that amazing last stand where he's blowing them away and he gets pulled underneath the floor by the aliens and he disappears. And then uh, Vasquez has, uses that grenade launcher just to blast a bunch of aliens all in a row as everybody else is trying to get away. Uh, and then of course at the end, Ripley, she attaches, she straps together the last pulse rifle. And then I think the last flamethrower that they have, she puts them together and then she mounts up to go save Newt. Uh, oh, it's just so great. So, <laughs> you know, this could, this thing could have been like, this weapon could have been anything. It could have been, uh, you know, wads of a uh, wet tooth, toothpaste, uh, you know, a uh, toilet paper blown through a straw. Yeah. And I still would have loved it because it sits and within aliens. aliens. Yes. <laughs> so I even love, I love the pants they wear. I love the video monitors they use. I love the ships they walk, you know, they, they fly in. I love this movie and everything about it. The M41 AWOL post rifle. Awesome, dude. It's, <laughs> well, I'm glad, you know, that you had to mention that because it's not like you haven't mentioned it before. But uh, I like how there's an, in, like, I'm looking into the fandom right now, and, like, there's mm-hmm. an entire Wikipedia slash, like, page. I don't even know what this is. Xenopedia, if you will. Uh, yeah, um, avp.fandom.com is yeah, that I yeah. got most of my oh, weapon yeah. from. It's awesome, because <laughs> it, like, totally gives you, this is such a made-up weapon, yet, like, it gives you rate of fire, 900 rounds per minute. And it's, like, 2,100 meters maximum range, 500-point target. <laughs> And it, like, yeah, the cycling it, mechanism that it uses internally. Yeah, you know? it's a uh, <laughs> yeah rotating breach electronic pulse action. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome, and I'm so glad yeah. that there is mega nerds like you out there that you know have dedicated their lives to creating these fandom pages and making this like the most realistic gun ever. Yes, and it's not only used by the United States Colonial Marine Corps, but it's also used by the United States Army, which is great. Have you seen, which I'm sure you have, the actual dudes made this gun out of like an M4 and like turned it into an, like a pulse rifle? Yeah, and they had like a shotgun, I think was the was the underneath. Instead of a grenade launcher, it was a shotgun. Yeah, like a breacher. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually made this in real <laughs> life. And then it had the, uh, the, the ammo counter was operational yep. too. Yeah. Dude. Oh, man. God bless these people that <laughs> yeah. have the resources to and the time to do these kinds of things because we all... Because we know part we part of Yeah, yeah. And part of this list is the fantasy of imagining, like, what if I actually had this weapon? What would I do with it? You know, what would I blow up? Yeah, everything. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so... Um, so I, lo- I, I dig that there are fans out there that do that kind of thing. Yeah. The only thing about the rifle, and this is just me, but if, if we're in the 22nd century... Uh, it has no optic on it. It's just iron sights. Like, oh, uh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's you know, true. for an advanced society that prides themselves. Oh, I guess here's the uh, Xenopedia with it has like an EOTech on top. But <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but not in the movie. Even marine, even marines back then can't afford good shit. So I guess, uh, I guess that's a testament of the core. Um, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, there are, there is supposed to be kind of this rivalry between colonial Marines and like maybe like Whalen Utani company Marines. Like they're supposed to be like better funded, maybe mm. Cause these are like these are the ground troops. These are the grunts that yeah. are out on the front line. Uh, and so maybe they don't get the best gear. So they don't get optics. They're, they're yeah, supposed no. to be firing. They're not supposed to be fighting. We do more outside with less. Of, of 10 feet. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't need it Yeah, because they're just boarding ships. I mean, how far can your engagements be on a ship? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Well, that's a good choice, man. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, but for me, I'll kind of stay in the same like universe as far as futuristic weapons. Um, mm-hmm. The one I chose is Paz Vizsla's Heavy Blaster Cannon. So for those of you that don't know Paz Vizsla, he is one of the most iconic characters in the Mandalorian series. He is the heavy infantry Mandalorian. Oh. Uh... They have a fight yeah. in, uh, in the Boba third... Fett. Oh, yeah, they Boba do. Fett, the or the Mandalorian season 2.5, as we should say. Yeah, literally. <laughs> where they, enti- the first, like, I mean, 
four episodes are completely dedicated to Mando in the Boba Fett yeah. series, <laughs> which honestly I think was the best thing they could have done because everybody loves Mandalorian and like they were starting to lose me with Boba Fett. So <laughs> they brought back Mando and I was like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, the heavy infantry Marine uh, who wields the heavy blaster cannon and thing. this thing is so cool. I mean, it's soup. The the greatest scene ever was like Mando was getting overrun, and like all the Mandalorians come out of nowhere on jetpacks, and like this dude's just like has this Gatling gun, and he just lets it rip. Yep. And that yep. is like probably the coolest weapon in all of Star Wars. Even cooler than the the lightsaber. Even cooler than the dark saber. You know. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's just one of my favorites. It's very it's got a triple barrel thing. Yeah, it's got it, a triple. It almost- it almost has a bit of a smart gun feel from it, Aliens, if so, I do say so myself. It does, and I knew you were going to say that, because <laughs> it totally <laughs> does. And it, it, I think it was actually modeled after the smart gun. Because um, uh, so. even the charging handle is like a side charging handle, and that's definitely something that, that uh, they use in, yeah. in Aliens. There's a lot I like of, this weapon more now. Yeah, I know, and I knew you would. Uh, I think there was a lot of like fandom and like discussions and articles saying like the inspiration behind this one because there's a couple different styles, um, but this one specifically with like the rotating barrels and the fact that it's has a side uh, charging handle like the uh, Hitler's buzz saw, uh, mm. that was the smart gun. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. it's definitely modeled after that. But honestly, any anything in the Star Wars universe that like resembles any type of heavy ass machine gun. Is something I'm connected to. Like, uh, let's see, what's the other one from Rogue One? What's his name? Oh yeah, so they have a heavy repeater cannon, and it's used uh. by what was it? His name's Baze Mulbus in Rogue One, which is the guy who's got that giant armor, you know. And it's like he's yeah. got a backpack, and the ammo belt is coming off his backpack into his blaster. Oh uh, yeah, one of the yeah one of the two Asian characters. Yeah, not the blind one. Not the he, blind yeah, one, I but gotcha. the one that yeah. has like the fully automatic blaster. Which is super overpowered. Like, I don't know how they didn't just, like, take over. Or why didn't, like, all the stormtroopers have that gun? Because they, like, <laughs> like you said in the beginning, you might not get them with accuracy, but you can't get them with uh, multiple, you know, bullets. Yep. If everyone, if all those stormtroopers had it, they were bound to hit them eventually. Because we all know <laughs> stormtroopers can't shoot for shit anyways. That's right. Um, but, yeah, the heavy blaster cannon used by Pez Visla, I think, is one of the most iconic weapons in that series. I think it, like definitely made the series even better than it already was because it was already awesome. Mm-hmm. Plus the Mandalorians themselves are just like, uh, I can appreciate the warrior culture, uh, even though like the one they follow is kind of a culty, like yeah, they're faction. Culty. Yeah, they are very yeah. culty, uh, but you know, Sometimes you got to do culty stuff with your friends. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, uh, I don't know if you're watching it uh, in terms of different cultures. I don't know if you're watching uh, Andor right no, now, I'm not. but I'd highly recommend it because it is, it's one of the best Star Wars shows. Really? There. Yeah, it's really good. It's very different from all the other ones. They, they kind of, they, they really ground it. Uh, they, they try to really ground it, but it's like, it's great. It's great heist stuff. It's good political intrigue. And Interesting. it's it takes place during a very dark time in the universe, and you know you get a kind of an insight into it goes into like some characters who work for basically the the Empire CIA or FBI basically their internal investigations, mm-hmm. and so you know uh, Andor is kind of on out you know they're kind of looking for him because they think he's connected to some other people that are you know it's kind of the beginnings of the rebellion. The rebellion is not. An alliance, the rebel, the rebel alliance has not come to be yet. It's all these kind of different factions that all hate the empire, but they're not like united yet. And so he's kind. Of, that's kind of the context in which his story takes place. It's it's really done really well. Nice, dude. I remember you were telling me about it, and you're like, yeah, it's kind of like a mystery kind of uh, you know thriller. And I was like, for yeah. Star Wars, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Um, because everyone knows Star Wars, they play the same shit over and over and over again, just in a different, you know, setting. Uh, but no, yeah. I, I'll have to check it out. It's on Disney Plus. Yep, Disney Plus. Uh, okay, we're not advertising for Disney Plus. Just wondering. Uh, yeah. but uh, <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. So, what do you got next on? That's it for that one. Uh, what do you got? The last one here is more of a category of weapon than it is a specific weapon. There's there's a couple of examples of it. But when I thought of it, I thought I have to add this to my list because it's one of those fantasy aspects that like it. I know it would never work in real life, but it's such a cool idea. But it's the sword slash whip 
combination. It's a weapon that's a sword, but it has links in it. And you press a button or you change modes or whatever, and it instantly those links come loose, and it's a whip now. So you'll know this from – there's a movie called Brotherhood of the Wolf. If you've never seen it, man, I totally recommend Brotherhood of the Wolf. Uh, it's a great all-around kind of action. It's French. It's a French movie, and it's just wow. got – it's just got it all. It's got martial arts. It's got action. It's got mystery and political intrigue. It's great. Uh, but it was used by uh, Vincent Cassell. He plays Jean-Francois. Jean-Francois. And he's, you know, uh, spoilers, he's the main antagonist, uh, which I guess is kind of a, a major spoiler for the movie. But uh, anyway, he pulls it out. And it was the first time I'd ever seen the, the, the uh, it's like a bone sword. It's a sword and then it, and then it, it, it it changes modes and becomes a, a whip and he uses it really well. Like the fight scene is really well done because it looks a little ridiculous, but they do a good job making it seem like a deadly weapon. Uh, and then the other, the other more famous example maybe is uh, it's the main character or the, the main weapon of Ivy, which is in the soul caliber uh, games. It's yeah. a fighting game where everybody has some sort of sword. Yeah, there you go. I uh, have some sort of sword or, or, or weapon like hammers or, or swords, but Ivy, who is, she must be very cold because she wears like hardly any clothing <laughs> in the game. But uh, uh, she has that. That's her. She can you can switch weapons back and forth from a sword type to a chain whip type. And uh, and then the last one you can you've seen on Pacific Rim. They only use it really quickly, but they're they're being dragged up into space uh, by the flying uh, kaiju. And Kaiju. he they, it like pops out of, you know, his wrist and it's like in a chain and then it s- s- solidifies and they use it to like slice through the body of the Kaiju and, and, and fall down to earth. But uh, I just love it. It's it's, to- it's total fantasy. It's not realistic at all, but that's probably why I like it. I like it whenever they do any combining of weapon forms, you know, like where they have like the chain, the chainsaw gun in yeah. Gears of War. Oh, yeah. The Lancer. Um, the Lancer. There you go. Combining uh, two I weapons. Think- yeah. Yes, yeah, it's just more of what you love combined into one place. That's awesome, dude. I honestly forgot Soul Calibur was a game. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Isn't it just like they, it's like a Tekken, right? Yeah, it's like Tekken. It's a fighting game, very uh, heavy, you know, technical game where there's a lot of different combos and reversals and yeah, moves. Yeah, it's like and, Mortal and I've Kombat. Seen people that are, exactly. People, I've seen some pretty amazing people uh, play that game. Uh and uh, and it's it's fun to play even if you're not very good at it because all the characters have are, look really amazing. They're all very like unique looking. And the main thing with that one is the soul the soul series is that they all have weapons. It's like oh, a heavy. Gotcha. It's a weapon heavy kind. It's of weapon fight. heavy. It's not fists. It's weapons. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, that's cool, man. Thanks for reminding me of that because that reminded me of my childhood when I played that game. Um, <laughs> but cool. Is that's your list? That's it. That's my list, man. Okay. Well, I got one more for you, and then we can move on to our game. So you ready? Yeah. Okay. Kind of leaving the real, the fake reality of fantasy. Going. <laughs> we are ingraining in real life weapons, and last on my list, and honestly, a weapon I hope to own in the future is uh, John Wick's Sig MPX. So nice. the Sig MPX it is the nine millimeter version. It's a submachine gun. Uh, it is a nine mil version of the Sig MCX, which is the full rifle version of it. Um, mm-hmm. But pretty much, this is a submachine gun that is featured a lot in John Wick Chapter Three. So, but it kind of makes uh, an appearance in multiple different configurations. Um, mm. My favorite configuration is internally suppressed, uh, which honestly we got to experience this gun when we went to Haley Strategic to do the experts uh, try for the Mm. Call of Duty games or the Call of Mm -hmm. Duty guns in real life. And that's when I actually first got a hold of this gun. And that I actually is going to sound cliche and a little stupid, but I fell in love with this gun. Um, (laughs) So yeah, the uh, John Wick has his personal one in the movie when he's fighting in chapter three, he's fighting at the continental uh, hotel. Yeah. He has this nine mil AR. It's actually the MPX. It's the Terran tactical version of the MPX, uh, yes. which has all the fixins. Let me tell you that gun must be <laughs> so much fun to shoot. Uh, I would love to be able to mess around with that gun, but that's not the only time it uh, pops up. It pops up when like uh Halle Berry uses it when they're fighting in Morocco. 
Uh, like a lot of the bodyguards have like the MC or the MPX in like a different in a really short configuration or standard. Um, and then it also pops up. A lot of guards use that gun in that movie. It must be just a hmm. sick thing. Um, but yeah, the the MPX is a gun I hope to own uh, for it's submachine. So beautiful. It's such a cool one. And like like I said, the internally suppressed version where you have the suppressor inside of the rail is mm-hmm. like an undefeated combination. And I will, I don't know, if I have to move out of state to buy this gun, I probably will one day. Sounds uh, like yeah. you're going to have to move out of state. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite guns right now. Um, and like I said, it's a 9mm version, so it, it's just a hoot and a half to shoot. It barely recoils, and you can put uh, rounds on targets super fast. It beats out the MP5 for me. That you know, mm. I Yeah, which is surprising because everyone loves an MP5 slap, but I would rather have this gun than an MP5. I like it, man. That's a really good choice. A solid choice to round out the list. Also very grounded in reality because this gun actually exists. It does exist, and it will one day, like I said, I guarantee you it'll one day be in my arsenal. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. You heard it here Come first. Check, check back with us in a couple of years, yeah. and we'll let you know. When we'll I'm, update you. When I moved out of California, and I'm happy. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, folks, that is our list for favorite weapons of pop culture we hope you agreed or we hope you disagreed because if you did send us a message on our instagram pcfm podcast uh hopefully by the time you listen to this our email will be fixed is it still uh, not who fixed knows, man. yeah it's we still have not fixed man we have better no not idea. yeah instagram is going to be the best way for now folks uh our our youtube uh if, but if you're listening to this at the time of this recording our youtube channel is still down they took away our gmail for some reason we yeah we have know. no idea they're just like so. you guys uh it was probably because I was like selling mail order brides through the PCFM podcast. But uh, oh man, you know what? Yeah, I heard that's frowned upon. It is frowned upon. But yeah, we have no idea why they got rid of it. it it's just kind of happened. So we're we'll slowly figuring it out. But yep, Instagram is your best course of action if you want to send us some questions or send us your top picks for best weapons in pop culture. We also wanted to take a second of your time just to shout out some of our new subscribers on our Patreon. Yes. Uh, yes, Peter Yin. Welcome to the party, brother. We Old school Peter. Peter's been with yeah, us for a while. Peter has been with us for a while, and we appreciate him because he sends us some very funny and very interesting videos all the time on Instagram. So thank you, sir. Uh, we also want to welcome Kobe. That's all the information that was given to us on Patreon. So welcome, Kobe. And You're then welcome, Kobe. finally, welcome Max Yost or Yost. I hope I said that right. But welcome to the party, my friend. Uh, appreciate your support. And we're looking forward to having you hopefully on our monthly movie live stream. So cool. Nice. Good one. OK, that's uh, that's great, man. I love uh, seeing new people on the Patreon. We're going to have a good time in the future. We are finally going to transition to our game and we're going to end this episode strong. So Izzy, for this game, I am the game master. Are you ready, my friend? I am ready. I'm okay. ready, man. I'm excited. I love our game. Our thank games you, are Chris, good. Yeah, thank you for coming Chris. up with this game. Chris is the mastermind behind the games. And this game is no This game is a great example of what he is. Honestly, I'm reading it right now and I'm like, okay, this will be fun. All right. So <laughs> this game is called Murder by Numbers. I'm going to say the name of a movie, and you have to tell me how many on screen in quotations emphasize oh my this. God. Oh he's my very, God. he's very. Uh, he wants me to emphasize the fact that these have to be on screen deaths. On-screen Each one deaths. has. Yeah, we know it's going to be a factor because they're probably going to be like multiple deaths, but yeah. they're not. They didn't on have screen. an on screen. Yeah. You know? So really important that they have an on screen. And one more time for the people in the back, these are on screen deaths. And no, I'm not counting Alderaan or any other planets getting blown up. I'll That's give you credit right. if you're with. If you're within 10 to 100 of the body count, and I'll give you an extra hint, the body count only gets bigger as we go on. Okay, okay. Okay, so I'll give you credit, just to reemphasize this, I'll give you credit if you're within 10 or 100 of the body count. Okay, if it's a bigger number within 100, yeah, if it's I think smaller so. within 10. Yeah, okay. I got you. I so if that. it's a three-digit, 100, if it's in 10, I, that makes sense to me. Okay, Yeah. are you ready, my friend? Let's do it, man. I'm excited. This one's going to be tough, though. Look, okay. <laughs> so, for the warm-up, Predator 1987, how many on-screen deaths? On-screen deaths. On-screen deaths. Okay. On-screen deaths. I'm thinking of the 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 attack on the, the gorilla base in the beginning. 
There's a bunch. There's a bunch right in there. I'm thinking three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know, there's at least a dozen in there. Uh, you know, uh, Shane Black's character gets taken out. That's that happens. You see him get taken out on screen. You got Carl Weathers. You got, um, uh, you know, uh, Poncho. You got um, uh, Old Painless. You got Jesse Ventura. Um, man, oh man, there's so many deaths. Not you don't get to see uh, Billy because he happens off screen. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 17 deaths. And I'm going to say you are very wrong. Apparently, oh, according what? to Chris's analysis, it is 64 on screen deaths. 64. <laughs> Oh my! On screen death. On screen. Boy, that yeah. that base must have been a lot bigger. Yeah, than that's I what I was 64? thinking. Sixty-four. Yeah, I'm oh trying. I'm goodness. trying to think in my mind because I he have like the knife killer. He's like stick around, but like yeah. he, there is some scenes where he like just runs through and just like traverses past six people and they all just drop. Yeah, um, you're right. There was a lot of death. It had yeah, because after that base, the the deaths get very low, but a lot more personal because it's the team. So. Yes, the team. Guy sixty-four. Well, I was. Man, I'm in trouble now. I'm a little nervous. And that's the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you ready to get this going? Yeah, let's do it. All right, first one, Fifth Element, 1997. Fifth Element, 1997. I love this movie. I remember when I first saw this movie, we were going to see this movie. My friends invited me, and nobody nobody cares about this. But I, And I didn't even know it existed. It was this totally fresh experience. I remember seeing that. So let's see. Um, I'm thinking, boom. Uh well, they get blown up, but that's a grenade that's off screen or whatever, you know. Um, here. And just to remind you of the hint, it's these body counts get bigger as we go up. Bigger as we go up? Oh, my gosh. Wait a minute. I mean, like, oh, geez. There's a bomb. I mean, there's a bomb on the freaking <laughs> ship that Zorg puts on there and then he goes he goes back and they I think they switch it out or something like that. Um, I'm going to say 200 deaths. Whew, that's a big fucking number, pal. Okay. I'm going to say you are incorrect there, buddy. <laughs> oh, no. For Fifth Element, 1997 has eight, zero, 80, 80 on screen deaths. 80 deaths. deaths. Yes, 80. Okay, 80 on screen deaths. I thought you might, you might count the, uh, all three of those military ships that get Killed by the evil presence in the beginning of the show. Oh, the no. beginning of the movie. Don't ask me, ask Chris, because I'm just right. reading what he put down here. Don't shoot I, the messenger. I, I, I trust Chris. I trust Chris that he has done his research. But yeah. man, oh man, I I was trying. I was thinking about who was left on the the cruise ship, but I suppose most of the people had you know had evacuated. But, I'm so. sure. Okay, so for this next one, here is one we actually just watched not too long ago. American Ninja, nineteen eighty five. Oh, the original American Ninja! Oh my goodness! Well, there's the, there's the uh, the beginning, you know, the ambush. Yeah, you know, a bunch of dudes get killed there. Um, I mean, gosh, I don't, there there's not a lot of fighting in it. He's mostly him like sneaking around. There's a big fight at the end, but it's got to be. It's the hint is a but you know it's got to be more than eighty, right? Um, I'm gonna. I this is kind of stab in the dark. I'm gonna say a hundred, a hundred deaths. In that movie. Huh. I don't know whether what? you, uh, you what? know what? I'll give it to you since we're in three digits now. The thing oh. is you're within 10 or 100 of the body 10 count. 100. Uh, which American is, which Ninja. Is, tell me. Tell American me Ninja we'll is about. 114. 114. Deaths. So you're I mean, farther than 10, I, but you're with. I would give it to me. <laughs> I, I know you. You know what? I Just will give it I to you because we're in three digits now. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. 114 deaths. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of deaths. I don't recall that many people dying. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, it's it had to have been at the very end when there's the big. Yeah, that giant when brawl. When his buddies come in. Yeah, his buddies come in. The dude's like with the. His his uh his black friend, he's got the machine gun sidearm. He's oh, yeah. Boy, so. Let's see. Um. Yeah, no, I'm going to believe Chris. I don't know where he's getting this information from. Well, but. I can only hope that he went back and watched every frame. Yeah, and he's like, okay, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, my friend, we are almost halfway through. The next oh, one no. we have is The Mummy 1999. 
Oh, The Mummy, 1999. Okay, this is the Brendan Fraser one, the yep, good one. The good one. The okay. only mummy that ever should be. Yes, the only one that actually exists. Uh, oh, golly, man, I feel like uh, you know, he, there's him in the desert with his buddies, the army buddies. He's the only one that gets away. There's uh, there's the three dudes that are the the explorers with him. They all get their their bodies sucked dry. Um, I mean, all the all the I don't know if like all the people that are zombies, the emotep zombies in the city when they're trying to escape. I don't know if those guys people are dead and they came back. I would consider those um, kills. Those those were kills. Okay, that's a lot of people. I mean, it's definitely got to be a hundred more than one hundred fourteen, because um, the numbers are only increasing. But uh, man, at the end, there's not a lot of people left. At the end, there's that pilot guy, the World War One pilot, who wants to die in glory and he gets his wish. And he dies with a smile on his face. Um, I'm gonna say a hundred and forty. Hundred and forty. You said a hundred and forty. Hundred and forty people died. You are very close, my friend. I'll give it to you. It is oh. 155. Oh, 15 off. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that as well. That was pretty close. Um, so, yeah, <sighs> I'll give that one to you. So, yeah, 155 on screen deaths in The Mummy. That's a lot of deaths. That is a lot of deaths. And who would have thought? I'm, like, trying to think about, you know, all those deaths now in that movie because it's pretty it's PG-13. <laughs> yeah. 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 But anyways, let's move on to a little bit more hardcore movie. Braveheart, 1995. Oh my goodness. Oh my it's hundreds. It's got to be in the hundreds because every there's there's, you know, there's just well, let's see. They don't get killed on screen, but like his girlfriend, his wife gets killed, and then they come back and they kill that little fort, and then they move on to the next fort, and then there's the field, the field of battle. Like there's three two or three battles. Like there's I think there's two major battles. And then there's the siege. Well, okay, they don't. He doesn't die on screen, but like, uh, do that. And then there's people getting shot when they're sieging that one castle at York. And uh, oh man, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna say based off how the numbers are climbing, I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say 300 deaths. There's 300 deaths in uh, 301. I'm gonna say 301 to put myself over into the hundred category, hundred plus category. Okay. Unfortunately, my friend, you shot a little too high. A little too high? A little too high. Just a little bit. By a couple hundred. Just kidding. Uh, 184 is 184? 184 is the amount of on-screen deaths. And I could believe it because they have that giant battle scene in the beginning, or at the end. Yeah, uh, I guess you have to see them die, not just imagining how many people died in the battle. I think that's where I went wrong. I'm imagining like how many deaths there were total, but not how many you see. (laughs) Okay, well, we got three left here. Okay, all right. I got to come back. I I I know you 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 got it it in you, buddy. So next one, Starship Troopers, 1997. Oh, my God, so many people died. (laughs) So many. There's beheadings. There's the acid bug. There's... Get people getting their brains sucked out. There's the, uh, you know, oh my gosh, there's so many. There's just dudes getting cut down. There's getting, yeah, a lot of beheadings. A lot of beheadings in this a lot. One. Um, all right, so the, the we're climbing from 184, or right from the previous one. Um, I'm gonna say I'm not gonna overshoot it. I'm gonna say 212 deaths. You said 212. 212. The number is 256. Oh, 256. 256. That's a big that jump. is a big jump. It's making a big jump. And I can, I'm going to give you a little hint, and Chris might despise me for this, but we are into big jump category now. Big jump category. Okay. Big jump right. category. 256. So, 256. Golly. And it's only going to get bigger. And it will get bigger with the name of a movie is a number 300. <laughs> 300. Oh, man. I'll give you a little small hint. It is much more than 300. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Um, I mean, there's the messengers that all get pushed into the pit. This is Sparta. Um, uh, You know, there's the initial battle. They send waves and waves and waves of of enemies after them. Uh, And there's obviously 300, right? Well, do they all die? All the three guys, because... You know, we know that 300 Spartans went, you know, according to the myth. Yeah. But they all die in the end. Not, you don't get to see all of them die. But, um, dude, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to say 
I'm going to say a big jump, huh? That's all I'm saying, man. I'm, Chris right. is already punching the air. I already can tell. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say a thousand, a thousand deaths. Okay. A thousand not... on-screen deaths. Okay, that's a huge jump. What? You said a big jump? I said a big jump, not a long jump. Okay. <laughs> the actual number of on-screen deaths is 600. 600. So 600. double, double the name. Double. Okay. Yeah. All right. Man, oh, man. But okay, man. Numbers are hard, man. Numbers are hard. This is a hard so freaking specific. game. Yeah, yeah, very specific. This is, this is like you're just taking a shot in the dark. I like it because we were, we were putting the episode together and you asked Chris, you're like, I, you sent the text. Like, Can you put a thing? He's like, yeah, I got it. And like, you know, 30 minutes later, he's like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how he just like pulled this out of his ass. <laughs> but good right. for him. But uh, okay, right, well, man, here's the last one before last we finish one. it up because I know we're running a little bit over and we apologize, but... Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. The Return of the King. Oh, my gosh. So many deaths. <laughs> I'm just thinking of, like, when they have the Oliphants coming in and they're just swiping dudes yeah. with their little razor wire tusk things. Like, that's 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 hundreds of deaths right there. Okay, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to say I'm going to say a thousand deaths for this one. This one is the same answer, a thousand deaths. Oh, I really wished you would have uh, got that one right. It's 836 for the most on screen. Oh my God. The most on screen deaths of all time. So it holds the record. 836. I wonder what movie is going to top that. I don't know. Like, I mean, we got to, it's got to be some epic battle where you see everybody die. Yeah, literally. It would be like Independence (laughs) Day. It would be like Independence Day, but you would watch like the laser just go over all everybody. (laughs) You Independence know. Day has got a whole. I would think that Independence Day would be on that list too, man, because you see so many people get engulfed in flames, blown up in their jets. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wonder. I'm surprised yeah. that didn't make this list, but oh well. I would listen to Chris and believe him. 836 is the most on screen deaths of all time. Uh, but folks, that's all we got for this episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast. We hope you had fun playing that game, Izzy. I, that was a hard game, dude. That was that such a hard, hard game. game. But it was fun. But it was a lot of fun. fun. I learned a lot. I learned a lot as well being the game master. So hopefully when you are the game master on the next one, Chris doesn't pull any punches and I'm sitting in my seat sweating as well. (laughs) Yes, I long for the day. Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate you so much. We'll see you on the next one. Cue The the music. Cue it. Cue it now. What's going on, everybody? You just listened to the free version of the PCFM podcast. If you want full-length versions of podcast episodes, plus much, much more, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash PCFM podcast. That is right, Israel. If you want access to this full episode, you have to subscribe to the Fuzzy Private tier, which is our cheapest tier on Patreon at $5 a month. But if you are interested in a little bit more, We also have the Salty Sergeant tier at $8 a month and the Lifer tier at $12 a month. So hopefully we will see you there, PCFM family. Cue music.